Oh, so I'm excited. You guys over, I found you guys during COVID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, okay, so I've been in the fashion business for 25 years and like seven years ago, I launched my own shoe brand and I've been manufacturing that he, both here in Spain and also in um, Latin, in Brazil. And um, the top of last year, I was actually in Europe because I wasn't living here last year, um, technically. And because, um, but my factories were here. So we were, I was manufacturing in a Louboutin factory. And at the top of the year, I was, I went to Milan for an industry show. And then I went to Venice for a weekend. And then I came back into Spain and that, you know, from December, we started to hear a lot of stuff, you know, in Europe about what was happening, you know, in Asia. But by the time I arrived back in Venice, like we, I took off and then all of a sudden the Venetian air, air people just shut down the airports. Like they oh. Italy shut down. I wow. went into Spain and I was going, I was in Barcelona. I was taking a train from Barcelona down to the Valencia region, which is where I was manufacturing. And that's when Europe just shut down. And at that time, nobody knew if it was airborne or was surface bound. And, you know, the U.S. State Department issued a warning and they were like, you know, all Americans, you need to leave right away. And I was like, okay, well, that doesn't seem like a good idea because nobody can tell me if you can, you can get it from the, the air or, you know, <laughs> so to go to the airport where everybody, all Americans are rushing out of Europe to sit, go through customs, to sit on an aircraft for eight and a half hours. I mean, the chances of you catching it were great. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I'll stay here. My, uh, my boyfriend was here. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just stay here. And in my mind, I was thinking, well, this will only be three weeks. You know, so I'll be the first one in the factory because we're the smaller brand on the, on the factory's roster. And then I, uh, it, three weeks turned into three months. And, you know, I'm somebody that really needs to focus my energy on projects. And so I was like, this, having a wine, having a line of alcohol, pro alcoholic products was always in my sphere. I just thought it would happen maybe five years from now. I didn't think it was gonna happen immediately. So the area in which I manufacture, um, the, it's just luxury factories and wineries, like old wineries. So I was like, well, this is a time for me to just start to see if I can understand what this business is all about. And so having spent a lot of time in Europe throughout my career, you know, I've spent a lot, I've had periods of my life that were totally in Italy and then totally France. And this is like this is my Spanish period and having experienced the food and the wine and the beer. And the, it was my opinion that Spanish product is far superior. When I say product, I'm talking about the natural ingredients, you know, and what most people don't understand is that a lot of, because of the, the temperature here and the climate, it's pretty stable as compared to France and Italy. So a lot of times like even the olive, the olives that, you know, the Italians claim to produce, they come from Spain. A lot of the grapes for a lot of the, the wine in both Italy and France, a lot of it comes from Spain. Um, oh. It's just the difference is the French and the Italian um, wineries have invested an inordin inordinate amount of money in terms of marketing. So when you think of wine, you think of French, you think of France and you think of Italy first. And, you know, when I was thinking about it, you know, every time I'd walk into a retail, a wine shop or what have you, it would be like 90% France. Then you mm -hmm. have like, you know, 9% Italy. And then you have like this little table mm -hmm. with maybe like, you know, a, just a red from Spain or, you know, one or two items. And I just, you know, I, I really have enjoyed the food here and the, so I was like, okay, well, I think this would be something that would be unique to the American market. And I would love to like kind of introduce this, you know, to, so it was a matter of just figuring out how to get it done, you know? And then it was a matter of um, the one thing people were doing worldwide during the pandemic was drinking and smoking, right? So <laughs> drinking, smoking. So the wineries were still operational. The factor, the shoot fashion factories were shut down. So I started to like take time to um, really meet a lot of the wineries speak to a lot of people in the industry here. And I knew that I needed to find a, a wine, um, a winery or a partner that could do a, multi a multitude of things. You know, I wanted to work with a winery that was large enough to, once we got to that point of, you know, scaling, could like um, actually handle the US market. I wanted to know that they could do standard wine, ecologically produced wine, as well as organic wine. 
I'm not a personally a fan of organic wine at this moment. I don't think it ever tastes very good. But <laughs> I, and I, I think that soon they're going to figure out how to technologically make that happen. So I want to be partnered with a winery that can do that. The other thing is, um, then I had to learn the compliance side because it's not as easy as shoes. I can ship like 10,000 pairs of shoes to the, to the United States and I can go to, oops, sorry, I can go to JFK and I can actually pick up the goods, no problem, work with US Customs. With wine, you really can't do that. You have to go through, there's a three tier system in the United States, which is the brand distributor and the retail partner. The great thing about, you know, one of the benefits of going through COVID is that everything is online now. You know, so before you couldn't purchase alcohol online, you had to go to the store. Now you've got a bunch of um, companies that just sell online. So they almost act like retail entities. So then it was a matter of finding, speaking to my business attorney who put me in touch with our distributor who then, and then I figured out who I wanted. So it was all of that stuff. And then you have to go through the FDA and like, mm. <laughs> the cool thing is I was pay filling up paperwork. That I didn't even know I was doing it. <laughs> I know I have, I know, I know what I'm doing, but I'm not really sure why I'm doing it. Like you have all of this, it's endless paperwork. So really it took me, in all honesty, when I think about it, really six months, once I knew exactly who I was going to partner with over here to produce the wine. Um, is that bothering you, the noise in the background? No? no. Okay. And then, um, then it was a matter of picking a team. So to build the website, you know, so I found somebody in New York you know, finding um, photographers, making sure the, the benefit of the fashion background is, okay, how am, am I gonna set this brand apart? So I'm gonna use, I used what I know, like in fashion, doing the photo shoots, you know, all of that stuff to really kind of draw in the customer. And for once, I'm actually working in a space where it's not just geared toward women, it's geared toward everybody, you know? So I wanted to, everything from the label to the actual cork to every aspect of the business has really been me making sure that, you know, everything happened the way I wanted it to. And then, um, and then we ran into the issue of um, the Suez Canal. That was another thing. Cause I, oh my gosh. everything like shut down. I didn't understand. Like I was speaking to the distributor who actually moves that they work with the freight forwarder to move the product out of the country. So again, shoes, you can fly. They're relatively light. Alcohol goes by sea normally. So working, we booked everything on the freight. And then I was told there are, there's no space. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, we've got everything, we've got everything lined up. What do you mean there's no space? And they're like, well, the Suez Canal situation that happened a couple months ago, that's, that's affected freight worldwide. And oh my God. to a standstill. In addition to that, during COVID, America was home ordering stuff, you know. <laughs> So there was a backlog, you know, and then the ports were closed. No, nobody was working because no, nothing was moving. So um, there's a backlog of stuff that's moving toward the United States right now. And, you know, from food to fashion. And they, they still, still haven't filled those positions again. So everything has come to a... So finally got something on, on, a, on a freight liner, got it to the United States. Then U.S. Customs is backlogged. So it was just like... <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then, you know, we launched and it was, we had a really great reception, but then, you know, there's certain things within the United States that I've had to learn as well. Like when you work with these retail and online retail entities, you know, we registered because I was asked, you, you have to, every state kind of acts as its own country when it comes to alcohol. And I think marijuana as well. I'm not really sure. So you have to, I said, well, I want to register in the biggest markets, the number one market for wine alcohol is in New York. Second to that is California. And number three is Florida. So in having the, the ability to sell online, you can, with those three, two states, three states, you can pretty much service 30 to 40 states across the country, which means if you're in California, you know, the retail, the, when you go into the, the back, you know, you place the order, the system will find the retail that's closest to you and then send the goods to you. So no problem, I got that figured out. But what I didn't know, and nobody really told me, I had to learn this, is that just because we can sell to that state, that does not mean that retailers can have the ability to sell in their store. You have to register as a brand in each state. So in other words, if Peter Wine Shop is in Florida, you know, Peter, I have to register my company in the state of Florida and actually truck the goods down there in order to service. So 
this is kind of why everything was like in a, wow. like a so I've been, I've been learning as we've been, as we've gone. So yesterday yeah. was exactly a month that we've been in business and it's been exciting. Um, and it's been, you know, a little nerve wracking, but I've, um, I'm pretty quick, you know, to make changes as needed. And that's the great thing about being small. You just kind of know. So, okay. That's all about me. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's awesome. 